You hold, I'm gonna whoop your ass, bitch. Watch. Keep keep running your mouth. Watch. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so it's been a little bit of time since we made it a video about Virgil Ortiz. You know, this year, 2023, it was supposed to be a banner year for Virgil Ortiz. He was supposed to fight Iman Testanianis multiple times in what I believe would have been one of the better welterweight fights we've had in a while. But uh, due to his health problem, rhabdomyosis, and, and, and the condition he suffered uh, throughout the year, you know, he's, he's been pulling out of fights, right? So now he, he has announced recently, it's been, it's been reported recently that Virgil Ortiz is going to be moving up to 154. He'll be taking on Frederick Lawson. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But I, what I wanted to talk about was this right here, ladies and gentlemen. You see that on the screen? You got Virgil Ortiz, you got Robert Garcia, you got uh, Virgil Ortiz Sr., this was how it all started off with Virgil Ortiz. This, this was the group. This was the blueprint. This was what made Waves in Boxing was, was, was Virgil Ortiz with Robert Garcia. Now, you know, he had left uh, Robert Garcia for a couple of fights. He had worked with uh, Manuel Robles, I believe, and, and, and he was still good. But, but um, I'll tell you right now, when he, was with, when, he was with, when he was with Robert Garcia... Just a little more surgical, just a little bit more precise, and I I think it's it's a it's great for the 154 division. It is great for boxing. It is just great to, the fact that Virgil Ortiz has a fight date coming soon, that he's going to be fighting soon, and that truthfully, you know, to have Robert Garcia back in his corner, you know, the renowned trainer Robert Garcia is a, is a welcome sign and a welcome sighting because a lot of times fighters and trainers split. Sometimes they. You know they're better off without, without, without each other. Sometimes they can reconcile the differences. It looks like whatever differences that there was in that camp between Virgil Ortiz, maybe Virgil Ortiz Sr. and Robert Garcia has been reconciled. And we're gonna get what I believe, what I deem to be one of the best trainer fighter tandems in boxing back in business. So uh, 154, watch out because Virgil Ortiz is back and he is back with the vengeance. Now let's talk about his opponent. You know. What he's got coming up because you know he's going to be fighting that gentleman right there above my left sh uh, shoulder, and that is none other than uh, Ghana's Aqua, Ghana's very own Frederick Lawson. Now, for those of you who really remember those early PBC days, you may remember Frederick Lawson because I, I sure as hell do. I, I remember very early on because I remember um, one of the first PBC fights that ever took place was when Frederick Lawson fought. Uh, Breedis Prescott, and that was down here in South Florida in March 2015 at the Highland Casino. I remember when I was working back when I, at my old job, I, I used to work at Antonio's Pizza on East Dan Beach Boulevard, making pizzas, and they used to have the radio on. I remember, I remember, I was making pizza one day, and I heard that I, I heard an ad on the radio. They were they, they were they were trying to advertise this this Frederick Lawson versus Kevin Bizier fight, right? And 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 Lawson got stopped in that fight by Bizier. Bizier wound up fighting Kell Brook next, as he was, uh, I believe he was Kell Brook's, uh, I can't remember if it was mandatory, if it was a voluntary, but he fought Kell Brook next, right? Um, you know, wasn't the best fighter in his prime, never really cut it at the, at the the as a French contender. Um, and I haven't, I haven't heard his name since 2015, but he stayed active, he's been fighting, you know, he's had a number of fights, got knocked out by Charles Hadley in 2021, so uh, clearly... Clearly, and he, he did beat Esteban Villalobos, tough, tough Mexican fighter, right? That uh, had that fight with Blair Cobbs like three or four years ago. So he's, he's a, you know, he's a body. He's a guy that's experienced. He's boxed, you know, well over 150 rounds in the pros. And it's it's the ideal fight for Virgil Ortiz in his first fight at 154. Um, Virgil Ortiz didn't fight this year, so Virgil Ortiz lost momentum. Momentum is everything in boxing. So obviously... Going with promotions, Virgil Ortiz and the, and the fine folks involved with this whole promotion, they're looking for Virgil Ortiz to come back, come back with a bang, and, and to continue that uh, that big knockout streak of being, you know, 100% KO ratio. Lawson's a veteran. Lawson's you know had over 30 fights, but Lawson's been knocked out in all three of his losses. So um, it is expected that Virgil Ortiz not only win, but win and look good in his uh, 154 debut. Now. Um, I don't know if he's ranked yet. I don't know if, if he's entered the ranks of 54. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check real quick while I'm talking to you guys. Make sure you smash that like button because that helps YouTube and the fine folks at YouTube let the people know out there that you guys like the content I'm putting out. Now uh, he hasn't officially entered the rankings yet in any of the governing bodies. Um, so he's gonna have to 
eventually, you know, get active, get back into the rankings. But there's a wealth of opportunity for Virgil Ortiz. I mean, you've got some great fights out there for him. you got guys like, obviously, Xander Zayas. I think would be a great fight for him. Um, if, if top rank and Google want to come together and make a fight, Mexico, I mean, Mexican-American versus a Puerto Rican, you know, I think that fight with their styles does great business if the fight ever comes together. You've got Jesus Ramos, who, um, you know, I still view as undefeated fighter, PBC fighter nonetheless, but that could be a good fight. There's a lot of options for um, Virgil Ortiz. I mean, I'll tell you this, there was a lot of talk about back in the, at 147 years ago about Virgil Ortiz and Earl Spence doing a Texas-like super fight. Well, Earl Spence is going to be fighting Terrence Crawford. Now, I don't think he's going to beat Terrence Crawford, but if he, well, no, matter what happens, no matter what happens with that fight, I think that's, that's something that, that should be explored by Golden Boy, by Oscar De La Hoya, by Rick Morgan and the fine folks for Team Ortiz. But nonetheless, I think boxing, look, whether you love Virgil Ortiz, don't care about Virgil Ortiz, you're indifferent, you don't like him for whatever reason, you can't argue the fact that boxing is better when Virgil Ortiz is active, when Bert, Virgil Ortiz is match fit, when Virgil Ortiz has that, that world-class piston-like jab working when he's, pressure, when he's pressuring you. Boxing is better with Virgil Ortiz than without Virgil Ortiz. And, 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 and you know, obviously, I think if I were him, him and Tim Zhu, Tim and Tim Zhu would be uh, battle for the ages. You know, two seek and destroy fighters, you know, coming... Come and, come and meet in the center of the ring, but they do, they do it in such an intelligent fashion. I, I didn't think that could be a great fight. Um, if Jerron Ennis wants to have a short world title reign and move up to 54, you know, I still would like to see Jerron Ennis versus Virgil Ortiz. I, unfortunately, when, when we didn't get it at a world to wait, I would like to see it at 54, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. But nonetheless, January the 6th, y'all can say the date Virgil Ortiz does return to the ring against Frederick Lawson. Uh, best wishes to Frederick Lawson. I'm not wishing bad on any fighter, um, but, I'm, but I'm calling out. I'm calling things how I see him. Frederick Lawson is a veteran fighter. He deserves respect for his uh, efforts and contributions to boxing, as does any fighter. But they brought him here for a reason. He's been stopping all three of his losses, and he's fighting a guy who has stopped everybody in his path. So he is here for a job. I, I hope he come prepared. I hope he... He does his best. He puts his best foot forward because, look, boxing's the, the theater of the unexpected. And you just never know what's in a man's heart, what's in his spirit. And, um, you know, best wishes to him as he comes into the fight with Virgil Ortiz. But nonetheless, really good news to see Virgil Ortiz back with that man right there. Robert Garcia. Loved, I loved watching Virgil Ortiz so much when he was a prospect and fighting guys like Antonio Orozco and, and, and them kind of guys. Mauricio Herrera, when he was mowing those guys down. You guys know he was, he was still good after Robert Garcia, but I just think a bit, more, a bit more surgical with Robert Garcia. And I think that man gives Virgil Ortiz his best chance at success in the pro. So shout out to Robert Garcia. Shout out to uh, you know everybody involved with um, the RGBA, the Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. And yeah. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about Virgil Ortiz on 154? Who do you want to see him fight and why? And um, yeah, what do you think about him reuniting with Robert Garcia? You know, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just kidding, from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hantanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.